Charcoal has this curious characteristic that as you draw with it, it comes apart. So the, the charcoal disaggregates at the same time that the image begins to assemble itself on the page. And so there's a funny game between an image coming together and the matter of the drawing coming apart. Drawing as a process is something that I do pretty much every day and enjoy and helps me to think, but it's also a way to approach other materials and other problems and questions in art making and beyond art making. There is a way to think about drawing as being somehow at the very other end of a spectrum which has the monument as its extreme opposite. A drawing has a fragility and a precarity which a monument can never have because a monument always wants both a sense of authority and a sense of fixedness or finality. But also because I think a drawing contains its own processes in very important ways. You always know how a drawing has come to be. If you look at a drawing, you can usually see every single mark that is made on that sheet of paper, whereas a monument is always seeking to efface its own processes. So there's something about those two polar opposites and what happens when you draw them into a relationship, which is a critical part of this exhibition. What is it that a monument would be if you brought to bear the logic of a drawing upon it? The exhibition is called Public Meeting, partly as a way to think about what it is to bring artworks together, that the act of exhibition making could be considered a kind of public meeting of objects or artworks. It's also true that that process of gathering things together is a quite important part of individual artworks in this show. And there, there are many works which in some way draw together disparate elements from different places into a kind of assembly or gathering. Comparative Monument Shalal begins with a very strange presence in the Australian War Memorial, which is the Shalal Mosaic, an enormous and incredible 6th century Byzantine mosaic, which is regarded as one of the great mosaics of the Middle East, and which was discovered quite by accident by Australian soldiers near Gaza in 1917. It was brought back to Australia, stolen, you could say, um, to be one of the visual centrepieces of the Australian War Memorial, which by chance was conceptualised the very same week that the mosaic was discovered by Australian soldiers. The work Comparative Monument Shalal tries to imagine what it would be to repatriate that mosaic. What would it be to take it back to the hilltop where it was taken in 1917? And what does that act of imagining its repatriation say about us? But also what does it say about the political changes that have occurred in that landscape since 1917, particularly for Palestinian people who live in, in that landscape. Evening Shadows began with an encounter at the Art Gallery of South Australia in Adelaide, seeing H.J. Johnson's painting, Evening Shadows. And I remember, I, in a very strange way, I suddenly had the thought, because it shows an Aboriginal woman with a child crossing the Murray River, what it reminded me of the Cumragunja walk-off. And I thought, what would it be to think that painting in relation to the walk-off or to re-inscribe it with that incredibly important historical event? My interest in the painting only grew when I began to research it because I discovered the painting is not only the most popular painting in the Art Gallery of South Australia, it's not only the very first acquisition with an accession number of one, it's also the most copied painting in Australia. And so one of the first processes in that project was to attempt to gather together as many of those copies as I could. Seeing H.J. Johnson's Evening Shadows, which has been loaned by the gallery, and that sequence of copies is a very strange thing. You tune into the differences and the elaborations, the omissions, the additions that recur through those copies. And of course, the way that you encounter those works as a phrase is through walking. And it's very important that that work is staged to induce that act, which is both shown in the painting and which is so central to the walk-off itself. What is it to walk? 
as an act of resistance, as an act of making meaning, as an act which is actually quite connected to the act of drawing. One of the interesting things about being an artist is not just making the work, but making its context, how you exhibit work. And because this is a survey, and it's in a very unusual space, a very large space, it was a chance to experiment and think about what it is to exhibit these works together. In the main space, there are three works which are shown as strata, which each make a frieze which runs around the entire space and which you then encounter as a kind of layering uh, in the experience of the work. And it's a way to experiment with the encounter with the work and how we read a work of art, how we make connections between different works of art. But it's also a way to make a work which is very horizontal against the verticality of the monument and which induces the act of walking very, very strongly in the encounter with the work. It's always hard to know what to hope for in what people take away from the work. I mean, I often think about that question in terms of what I have taken away from other artworks and that funny paradox that an artwork is something which is such an intense experience, which displaces the way that you read and think and see, but it also persists. Like when you see an artwork that is moving or affecting, it sort of stays with you for the rest of your life. And that, I mean, to, to hope for that is a lot, but I think that's what an artwork can do and should do, that it permeates the way that we experience the world and the way we act in the world for a very, very long time after we've experienced it.